and I'm back at the store picking up some essentials. Oh yeah, I'm gonna make, um, I'm trying to think what I was gonna make this week. I'm gonna do bulgogi, I'm gonna do okonomiyaki, which means I'm gonna do uh, cabbage. So, oh, cabbage, idiot, I need to grab cabbage. But yeah, good day at work, and now I'm gonna pick things up, and then go home and uh, work on vlogs and work out and more stuff with the 3D printer, yeah. Hey, long stretched out cat. I'm gonna get your belly. Yeah. Better than chicken parm, oh yeah. It's delicioso, I think. We'll find out. Better? Yeah, much better. Haircut necessary. Sorry about that. Mainly for tomorrow. Oh yeah, tomorrow. Big day. Could have even made some other vegetables Arr. that would have been a little bit more traditional. Get that bite. <laughs> Chef Caitlin, thank you. Thank you. All right, Chef. We'll see you soon. He's biting me. It does not. This facial expression like is you all of the way. Wrong. It, that's your facial expression while you do this bot, where you kick your feet back up and down. Yeah, I don't kick my feet up and down. I have not done that since I was like five. But this facial expression is you all the way. <laughs> Apostrophe. Oh, huh, this reminds you of thing. Josh, doesn't it? Bite that thing's face off. <laughs> Just like him. I'll do my best. Put a tiny little wig on it. Okay. It's him. That was definitely harder than I yeah. expected. 20 minutes, one minute. Well, according so to you, after you get a haircut, it doesn't need a wig. But I think my appetizer was definitely stronger than the other chefs. <laughs> <laughs> are charging. I wish I could charge all four at once, but I can't. Yeah. It's so pretty. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So we're having Shabu, and I just want to show you this really quick. Look at this glorious Thai refresher. Oh, doesn't that look tasty? That looks so tasty. I can't wait. We're just waiting for the broth to boil at this point in time. It's taking its grand old time. Oh, we're starting to get bubbles. I guess I should start cooking some meat now. They're not only beautiful to behold, they're also tasty, healthy. But who had the smooth idea to blend up the rainbow? Who put the smooth in smooth? Creamy bananas, sweet strawberries, tropical mangoes, add a splash of orange juice and a handful of ice with a dollop of yogurt and let her rip. Soon your tongue is doing the tango as the blended fruit flavors mix and mingle. But the smoothie isn't anything new. It just took a while for us all to appreciate it. In fact, both Mediterranean and Eastern cultures have been whipping up pureed fruit for hundreds of years. Except back then, the blenders were people. Food expert Ali Bull knows all about this marvelous fruit mashup. If I could create my own smoothie, it would be a Cali Alley, and it would have uh, coconuts, and pineapple, and I think I'm just describing a pina colada, uh, which is problematic, I guess. But blended fruit drinks didn't appear in America until the early 1920s, thanks in part to one man's love-hate relationship with oranges. In the 1920s, fruit juice was very popular in Southern California, and in 1926, a guy named Julius Freed opened up an orange juice stand. There was one little hiccup in his life. Now, as much as he loved oranges, he couldn't handle the acidity of fresh-squeezed orange juice. His partner, Bill Hamlin, was like, don't worry, I got you, pal. And he decided to stir together this mix of ice and orange juice, but with milk, sweetener, powdered egg whites, and vanilla flavoring. And it resulted in this 
very delicious and much less acidic, creamy drink. So I would love it. So they would say, hey, give me an orange, Julia. <laughs> Print all the things. A dual side syringe adapter for work. It smells like plastic and glue. Dig it. Can't wait to take this in and show them tomorrow. I think I'm going to do another revision of it though where screws hold it together. We'll see. Good night.